58 right now. But we're going to 59 next week. Okay. Hi, I'm is back. 58 or 59? Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll speak on 58 and then I'll come back. Please proceed. To State your name for the record. Offer your testimony. Uh, Sugar Russell. Nice to see everybody back again. Um, speaking, uh, from my understanding, with Bill 58, uh, there's already ordinances about tying stuff off to public property and that sort of thing. The difference that I was looking at was it's basically applying Bill 7 to it where it's uh, summary seizure and $200 to retrieve property back. Um, I haven't seen anything about administrative hearings, not that we're having administrative hearings with Bill 7 despite the numerous requests for them. Um, so I'm concerned that that will happen again, that the ordinance will not be followed even if it's passed by the people enforcing it. Um, I'm also concerned that Basically, what you're doing is trying to take away, again, people's shelter um, and charge them $200 to get it back, keeping them poor instead of spending that money and tens of thousands of dollars on raids to take a tarp um, doesn't help anything. And we're in, in financial crisis. You guys are selling off affordable housing. Uh, sequester cuts are putting HUD people at risk. and. You know, we are up to 10,000 houseless on the island with only 750 shelter beds, but let's go ahead and steal from them, charge them $200. Good job. Thank you for your testimony. Members, any questions? Council Member Monaghan has a question for you. Huh? Ms. Russell, please. Thank go ahead, Council Member. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Ms. Russell, I'm just curious. You know, we've had several bills uh, dealing with this issue in one way or another. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but. Um, it seems that um, the city's efforts, I guess, um, you know, when they when they remove uh, these structures or tents, um, uh, people always come back, and and um, I guess as, I'm, we, I'm as not, we did this morning, I'm not, I'm not really sure what the process is from your side. I guess what I'm asking is, please explain to me the process from your side, and uh, how is it that um, you are able to. I guess, or people are able to uh, erect their tents again once they have been removed? Uh, well, hmm. uh, let me address a little bit of that. I'm not going to get into people's personal tactics. I can, I can talk about mine um, when it comes to that process. Um, but I'm sure that everybody has their own kind of systems in order to survive the tyranny that is brought down by the system on them. Um, you know, real simple things would help this problem where there wouldn't be tents or tarps tied off to public property. Um, and it really goes down to heart, the heart of solving issues, which you guys are far more interested in using sticks to beat on people and to steal from them instead of giving them carrots um, in order to help them. The only way that I know how to keep people from getting tents back up is to actually get them into housing. Um, uh, Harry, I've talked with a number of city council members about a 72-year-old vet that was down at Thomas Square with us for eight months. And we tried so desperately to get him off the streets. IHS workers refusing to talk to him, no return phone calls, roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. Um, I sent an email to Mr. Anderson. I've talked with uh, Ms. Pine about his issues. Uh, of course, offering all the help and support they could and then radio silence. Uh, finally, Senator Susie Oakland stepped in and came down and met with us. And amazingly, he has been taken out of there and out of harm's way that you've created um, in order to get him into housing. And I'm so grateful for that. You have absolutely no idea how great it is that he is no longer on the streets. It shouldn't take a state senator to get people off the streets and not have a tent return. It shouldn't take PR pressure from a, a movement out at Thomas Square in order to have people do their jobs. You need to be using the money for funding for these proper programs. That's how you keep tents off the street. But I guess I'm going to ask again, I guess, how, how much does it cost a person to, uh, I guess, uh, get their stuff back and then um, go, I guess, 
Well, just get their stuff back, I guess. Okay, so you're asking like the administrative end of Department of Facilities Maintenance, yeah? Um, so, so under Bill 7, and, and like I said, I haven't seen the language in uh, 58 to see if it will uh, mirror that, although I would certainly kind of hope it does if you guys decide to pass it, which I hope you don't. Um, but you uh, send in a request asking for an administrative hearing where you can sit and argue um, that it should, you know, whatever items shouldn't have been removed for whatever reasons. Um, the uh, expected response from DFM would be, okay, sure, let's have an administrative hearing, but there's none. Um, we've been asking for them for a while, so the only way to do, to get any of that is to pay $200 to get it back. So how, how much have you paid so far to get stuff back? Well, right now we're waiting on administrative hearings and until we are not getting radio silence and we actually have an answer one way or the other on that, uh, we are not addressing the $200 because we're following the process within that ordinance, um, even though they're not responding, but we're gonna continue to try. Uh, I was just curious about that part of the Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate thing that uh, the Department of Facilities Maintenance doesn't seem to be uh, responding to because certainly you, you know us, we, we have our thoughts and, and how we think that things you know could and should be working and as to why things um, are legal and not legal to be taking. Um, but unfortunately, with the radio silence, they're not following through. In fact, as city council members, if you could put some pressure on them to respond to people's administrative hearing requests, because there's been many, um, and not just from me. Um, it's, it's really important because people are not getting an opportunity to have any kind of due process. Okay, I, I'm not really sure that, I, I was just looking for an amount, but. $200, but we're not paying $200 until we get a response about an administrative hearing, which is afforded us within the ordinance of Bill 7. Okay, and, and that's an aggregate amount? Is that just what for you, or is, I mean, is that each um, You know what, they How haven't many? defined any of that. Um, I don't know if $200 means for every single item. I don't know if it means $200 for every tag, which may include more than one people's items on it. Um, there, there's no, there's no uh, definitions within the ordinance that define that, yeah. um, and nor are they responding in order for us to be able to find out. Okay. okay. So we just don't know, because they're not letting us. But you have gotten stuff back from them. We haven't heard back from them at all. At all. We've uh, sent in multiple no, but I mean, requests. Have you, have you gotten your things back, your physical things back ever from, from the department? Were you able to? Uh, not under Bill 7 so far, no. There, there's been no response, so we can't. Until okay. they respond, we can't. Okay, uh, thanks. Any hey, members, any further questions for the testifier? Not, thank you. Okay. Thank you Appreciate for your the questions, I do. Chair? Anyone else? Just point of clarification, not Go a ahead. question. You can sit down. Um, it was stated that I was called and I did nothing to help a homeless veteran, as many on the council know that that is the one group that I always help. Uh, for the public's clarification, numerous homeless shelters did go out to talk to Mr. Harry. But he said he absolutely refuses to follow any of their rules. He's going to live how he wants and however he wants. And so... Ms. Russell, you need to sit down. Ms. Russell, please sit down. And go so ahead, finish, council member. So unfortunately, unfortunately, um, these shelters could not provide help because they could not find an organization that would l take anyone under those kinds of circumstances. But I'm glad that someone in the private sector has taken him in. Okay, thank you. No Ms. Russell, please sit down. You have already given your testimony. Thank you. Anyone else on Bill 58? Now we're going to move on to Bill 59. We do have one registered testimony.